definition video, but that would actually be worse for your internet probably. All right, so Avi, I heard your power went out. That stinks. So here's the start slide. Here's the first problem we're talking about. We already determined that we have similar angles here. They tell us that OH is parallel to ID. So guys, we also talked about the other thing we can use here to get another set of congruent angles. What other angle relationship can we use in this? We talked about it last week, but who remembers it? Thank you. Anytime we know parallel lines, think about what alternate angle pairs can we create. Once we have angle-angle similarity, we really have angle-angle-angle, right? We have all three angles. So we know that our triangles are similar to each other and we can relate the corresponding sides. What did you guys get for HP? We can also set up a... Sorry, Ellie, what would you get? I could not hear your audio. I think you said two, maybe? So, yeah, the other thing that we can set up is once we know the triangles are similar, guys, we could relate the six and the 27. So we could relate the long leg to the long leg. Because remember, hypotenuse is always longer, but we talk about the hypotenuse separately. Um, sorry, if we assume these are right triangles, which we can't really assume that. Or we could relate the 9 to the 27, right? The shortest leg to the middle leg, I guess we can call it. Shortest leg to middle leg. HP will be 2 here. Any questions on this one before we move on um, to a lot of right triangle focused stuff? All right. Read this for a second. So this is the proof that I was kind of trying to quickly explain last week and I real or last time we met, I realized I was going too fast. So from the right angle, if we drop an altitude to make another right angle on the what was originally the hypotenuse, what we create is three similar triangles. And the similar triangles are broken up related to each other here. So if you want to draw a picture of this in your notes, probably going to make this bigger. This is really, really useful as we move forward in math to say anytime you have a right triangle, the big right triangle, right, ABD or ADB, depending on what order you want to go in, and we drop an altitude, we then create a similar right triangle here of ACD and we create a similar triangle here of B, C, A, the, the careful thing is the order. So guys, if I would, if I was you, and I'm not going to pull my notes up because it'll, it'll cover up the stuff I want you to write, the order of the similarity is the stuff people screw up. So I'm telling you, the trap door, what you're going to be tempted to mess up is the order of the similarity. Avi, heard you lost power, man. Everything all right now? Did your whole house go out? So you lost the internet for a minute and got everything back up now? Man, that sucks. All right, so Avi, this, you probably really quickly want to draw a picture and at least write this similarity statement at the, the bottom here. Not really bottom, middle of the page more so. This is what I talked about way too quickly last time we met. In any right triangle, we can drop an altitude from the right angle. So drop doesn't necessarily mean like top to bottom but we can create an altitude from the right angle across to the hypotenuse and from there have similar triangles. So guys, it doesn't matter what your right triangle looks like as long as it's a right triangle. So as long as you have that perpendicular angle, it does not matter what your right triangle looks like. If we can all agree on these labels, that would be great. <clears throat> I had a ruler out yesterday. This is the problem with going back and forth, guys.
Everyone should be writing this unless you're already done writing it. So at a minimum, I want you to have the picture and then the triangle similarity statement. A D B similar to C D A similar to C A B. And where this gets so dangerous, <clears throat> now I will probably show my dot cam. Where this gets so dangerous is keeping track of which side is which. So in our first triangle, our biggest triangle, AB is the what? Is it the short leg, long leg, or hypotenuse? Short leg. Thank you. So AD, when we look at AD, and you don't really have to write any of this on your notes. I'm just trying to um, help us like see what's so dangerous about it. That then relates to CA, but in this triangle, the middle size triangle. And then it relates to CB, right? The first point, last point in all of these. In this, the littlest triangle. So we can actually relate all three of the pieces of the little triangle as the short legs, right? So if we relate short leg to short leg to short leg, it's actually all three pieces of our little triangle there, of the smallest triangle created. So this is our original, like parent right triangle, I guess we could say. This is our medium sized one that in this diagram is off to the left. And this is our littlest triangle off to the right. Um, the other thing that my diagram doesn't have that it should, this has to be perpendicular to your hypotenuse. So DB, remember, is the original hypotenuse. We're more used to seeing the right triangles, you know, situated something like with one of the legs on the bottom. But here we put the hypotenuse on the bottom for a specific reason. So if we're going to apply this, we should now be able to, when given an altitude, find any other missing pieces. So take a moment to try this on your own. Um, yeah, let's say go ahead when you have the perimeter of the outside triangle, put it in the chat. I know this will take a minute. I'm going to give you a minute to work on this. I would draw a picture if I was you. I would use highlighters if I was you also. I mean, I'm going to use highlighters and I'm me. Remember, your picture doesn't have to be perfect when we put this stuff in our notes. Guys, even if you don't label your corners, it doesn't really matter as long as you can keep track of what piece is what. What triangle do we start with? The smallest, the middle, or the biggest? Anyone want to venture a guess what triangle we start with? Smallest, middle, or biggest? We know it's not the biggest because we don't have OW. It's either going to be the smallest or the middle. Right, so it might be the smallest triangle, might be the middle triangle. I'm not quite sure how we would figure that out. If I just go by purely what it looks like, NW looks smaller than um, six, this length of six, because if we go short leg to short leg, right, NW would be short leg of the smallest triangle. This might be the middle triangle. Either way, we have six, eight, ten. So guys, sometimes a technique that I used when I was like learning how to do these problems and, and I still use really, if we're being honest, is set up kind of like a little table for yourself. 
regardless of what triangle the 6, 8, 10 triangle is. So I got to move. I got too much stuff. Too much stuff and not enough desk right now, guys. I need to rebuild my other desk. So 6, 8, 10 must be my short leg, my long leg, and my hypotenuse of that triangle. But if I look at one of the other triangles, like the biggest triangle, I have a long leg of 10, a short leg, I'm going to call this S then, not 5S, and a hypotenuse of 8 plus something, I don't know, X. And then if I look at the other triangle, I just have X, 6, and S, right? Which I think would fill into my table like that if I'm organizing short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. Does anyone else use this kind of structure to think and figure out what, uh, what proportion is easier to solve? Because guys, this whole table is proportions. If I look at my 6, 8, S, and 10, I can compare short leg to long leg of this original triangle they give me, the medium triangle. I can do short to long. And then I can do short leg to long leg of the big outside triangle. So I'm going to color code these things, although it gets really tough. These I'm going to make blue. Sorry, my highlighter skills are not amazing. And then I'm going to make green. Guys, if you have highlighters available, this is really helpful. The smaller triangles, I like to highlight on the inside of the bigger triangles. Now this X and 6 might need to switch places. So I'm going to leave that for now. <clears throat> then I'm going to try to figure out either this S or this X. Because either of these we could figure out. Has anyone figured out what this is yet? The OW, I guess we can call it. I think it's 60 divided by 8. You guys are all doing your own work and nobody wants to help me. You guys got to tell me if I'm wrong. 7.5? Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, I see. see Total, there are a lot of ways to solve this. This is why I wanted to, like, I let you guys go before I started talking about how we could do this. If you got 7.5, you probably took a correct direction. I did 6 over S is equal to 8 over 10, and I solved that proportion because if all of these short legs correspond to each other, now I'm nervous about the orange, so I'm going to wait to go to orange. But if all of these are the long legs and all of these are the hypotenuses, I can create proportions any way I want. I can even turn the table sideways and create proportions from that table. So if S is 7.5, then I know this is 7.5. So I know it's at least longer than the 6. So it's for sure the hypotenuse of that situation. And then if these are all right triangles, guys, what else can I use to solve pieces of right triangles? Yeah, how would that help me here? Um, X on the smaller triangle. Yeah, I could. Now, either of these are going to have to assume that 7.5 is correct, but I could set up a ratio here, right? The 7.5 over X and the 10 over 6. Or I could do 7.5 squared minus 6 squared would equal X squared, which got me 20.25, which then would tell me X is 4.5 which means I have it in the right place. That would make sense. And if I put 4.5 here, 
Like ask yourself all the ways around, does it make sense? Well, yeah, this would then be 12.5. So this really becomes 12.5. Guys, don't assume you're right. Check your math. You're like, okay, what is the factor between blue to green? Right, well, it's 10 eighths. Using a way that didn't require 7.5 to the S. For X or for the whole length of the side? For yeah, SW? For X. You got 12? This was 12.5? 4.5. Oh, 4. Sorry. It's, we're on Zoom. Don't get snarky. I thought you were saying 12. That's why I was concerned. So, um, which numbers did you use? I know there's got to be a way. I also, you, I also figured X first, and then for this. How'd you figure out X? So, um, I made the, uh, like, portions. So, 6 over 8 is equal to, um, X over 6, so. Ooh, I like that one, too. 6 over 8, so short leg compared to long leg, drop down here is equal to x over 6. The only reason I wasn't confident with that to begin with was I wasn't perfectly confident that this was our short leg, because sometimes the pictures lie to us. So as long as that is our short leg, this proportion could solve for x, this proportion could solve for x, I'm very confused at how Amar is in the waiting room unless he's logging in from a second place. So does it make sense how we would solve the proportions or set up and solve the proportions here? Amar, what's going on? I'm really confused how you're in here twice. Okay, so remember, I'm filming class or I'm recording class. There's no film these days. Um, but if you need to go back and watch some of the recording, it'll be up on YouTube here later. So we solved all the rest of this, but now we need to add everything up for the perimeter. And I wanted us to do these together because this is also a trap door that you'll fall into on con. So the perimeter of SOW, which is the entire triangle. So we need to take the 7.5, the 10, and the 8, and the 4.5, or you could call this whole thing the 12.5. But I'm going to say 10 plus 7.5 plus 4.5. Sorry, ignore that. I think 30? Yeah, that seems correct. I got 30. Yeah, so be careful. We got a couple other answers in the chat. So help me out, guys. What of this doesn't make sense? Yeah, I don't really love this. I shouldn't have put this one first. Um, I don't love the sizing of this because it's hard to tell which of these is the short leg and which of these is the long leg. So let's set up another one. Uh, that uses whole numbers, but this one's just as good. Um, ignore that this is asking for area. We'll do area. But let's look at this triangle. So draw this one. This is also slightly easier because your base on the bottom is a flat line. So let's draw this in our notes and then we'll talk about it. Guys, remember your ruler essentially has a right angle at the corner. So if you want to try to check, am I creating a right angle there up top? Use your ruler. Guys, being able to hear the plane that's flying by outside makes me happier than you will ever realize. 
And then I have to move back to Phoenix, but we'll have Windows, I guess. They said we'll have Windows when we go back. So guys, when I start solving problems like this, I organize my work by saying, what do I know? And actually, most of our proof work, we have to start with just what do we know and where do we want to go? Sorry, I'm not trying to rhyme, but, you know, there you go. So what do we have to start? The 1.8 and the 3, what are they? Identify, are they short legs, long legs, or hypotenuses in the triangle that we can make three sides of? So the triangle that we can make three sides of is the little guy. So if we make three sides of the little guy, what are the 1.8 and the 3? Uh, hypotenuse and then short legs. Yeah, so guys, especially if you struggled on that last one, please set up a little table with short, long, and hypotenuse. And I'm going to be really diligent about putting these things in order here. Katie Ann, what's up? Uh, we'll be able to do both. You know what I mean? It's just another calculation. But yeah, so short answer, I don't really care what you put in the chat because I know some people are struggling on this. Um, so I'm going to teach the whole problem no matter what. So thank you for giving me an answer in the chat. I'm not even sure if that's right because I'm ready to talk about area of this one. So you're probably right, but you got to hang out and wait for us. So we have a short leg of 1.8, a hypotenuse of 3, and a CD that we don't know. So I'm just going to leave that blank. I can then also use the 3 as what? As the short leg for the bigger triangle. Yeah, short leg for the biggest triangle, right? So, sorry, I was looking for a lighter color. I'm just going to use some. So middle triangle is going to go in the middle. And biggest triangle here is going to go at the bottom. So 3 is the short leg for the biggest triangle. And the hypotenuse of the biggest triangle is going to be 1.8 plus something. Whichever DB is. Are people with me on how and why I've set up what I have so far? So in this problem, we don't know anything about the middle triangle. So we could either set up a proportion 1.8 over 3. So here's one option. Guys, down here I'm going to write lots of options. 1.8 over 3 equal to 3 over 1.8 plus, I guess we can call it x if we want to. Or we know two parts of a right triangle. Somebody unmute and tell me what the better idea is here. Use the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, easier than a proportion. Use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to say, okay, 3 squared would be equal to 1.8 squared plus whatever this is squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and subtract the 1.8 squared to get my altitude. All right, I'm going to call that A because it's altitude squared. Grab your calculator and do this if you haven't already. 5.76. So be careful, that's not your altitude, that's your altitude squared. So square root that answer. What'd you get? It's 2.4. 2.4. So we fill in that we know 2.4 is the long leg of that. And then also, that starts to tell us something about the middle triangle. Right, that starts to tell us, okay, what piece is that going to be for the middle triangle? The short leg. 
the short leg. So then all right, our long leg is x. So for right now, I mean, we could put x. Our hypotenuse, we don't know. Ooh, we've got two conflicting areas in the chat. So if you have sent me an area, you might want to double check your work. I have two different answers in the chat. Hmm. What could we do now? Guys, you can just unmute and talk. Sorry, Alina, I see your hand. Go ahead. What can we do? You can make a proportion with the short side. And, yeah. You can do it with the... Um, okay, so you can do 1.8 over 3.4. Yeah. And then you can do... So if you want to find x, you can do, what was the other one? The hypotenuse was 3, right? Ooh, we yeah. could solve for hypotenuse too. So guys, this green slash blue leg is this green slash blue leg. What I labeled as x is right here. So I went ahead and set up the proportion 1.8 over 2.4 and 2.4 over x because I know I can solve this. But also, if you ignore the middle part, let's call this z. This is z and this is z. So we could also set up the proportion 1.8 over 2.4, which is this is what Alina did because she just took the other route from me another right way to get to Florida. So then she put three over Z or whatever you want to call it. You could just call it CV, but I don't like using a, I don't like using two point notation. It's just kind of annoying. So solving these proportions solves both of our unknown sides. Ah, crap, except we still have to, oh, oh, once I have X, I'll know what this is. What did you guys get for X or the length CB? I am not showing you the answer. You got to do it. Okay. Can I say it? Yeah, sure. I got 3.2. And what'd you get for Z? Four. Yeah. So this proportion we could have worked with, but it would have gotten kind of messy. So we never solved that one, but in solving these two proportions, and guys, again, I'm not going to write this work out because this is calculator work at this point, right? We do the cross multiplication and divide by the remaining term. So 2.4 times 2.4 divided by 1.8 or 2.4 times 3 divided by 1.8, right? We don't need to write this stuff out anymore. We can, but we don't really need to. This is easy enough math. Our calculator can do it. So that's 4. This is 4. Making this whole thing, what well, dB was our x. So 3.2 plus 1.8, what's this become? 5? Unless I made a mistake. Yeah? I can't tell if that's a hand, Alina, or if that's a five. It's a five. Okay. Do you think you're ready to do one of these on your own? I, like, I got two shrugs. I, I didn't get any real yeses. I got some shrugs. All right, so here's more of the application of why we might do this. Any right triangle can actually be turned into a rectangle. And so this is the original right triangle, PLM. And let's say we drop an altitude to this point six, or I guess you could say that PAL is your original triangle, and then you extend some things out to you know make a rectangle. But we know that PM and LU are parallel. 
we know that MP and PL are perpendicular, right? So we know this is a right angle. We know this is a right angle. Try to start solving this. This will probably be the last thing we do today because this is taking a bit longer than I expected, but that is okay. Lamar, are you still with us, man? Uh, yeah. All right, just making sure since your camera's off, I got to check on you. We can make triangle Pam, triangle Pal. Guys, I'm telling you, if you highlight these, it makes it so much easier. I had a student one year who started to like, because the chisel tip highlighters, they started to like make the thicker line on the hypotenuse and a thin line on the short side, you know, like really code it. What's the first thing that we can do here to, to get rolling on this? Let's go Calvin. Uh, yeah, now what else? You don't even have to use the Pythagorean theorem. You're right. But what kind of triangle is this? Do you know? It's special. It's a three, four... Five. Oh, I didn't see your hand. I'm sorry. I just, look, I'm set up differently than normal. You guys are over here. My camera's here and my paper's there. It's hard. I'm sorry. It's a three, four, five special right triangle, except this is actually 10 because it's a, it's a two times dilation of the three, four, five triangle. So the top, sorry, you can't see my notes yet. The top edge there is 10. What did you guys do over here to deal with this part? Anyone want to volunteer and tell me or I get to call on somebody? Aaron, you want to give me a suggestion for how I step over to the orange triangle and start solving things? Well, I took six and um Divided that by 8, and I got 0.75. Ah, you found the so scale took, factor. Yeah, and then I scaled up the green triangle to the orange triangle. So, what Aaron is applying is a proportional thinking application without actually solving... She's just doing a proportion in a different way, but it's super cool. So, Aaron said she figured out that the long leg compared to the short leg, or short leg compared to long leg, is either 1.3 repeating or 0.75, depending on which way we go. So then I can figure out that this short leg will be 0.75 of the 6. So what does this length of MA become? 4.5. Sorry, what? Two people said it at the same time. 4.5. 4.5.
And then, well, we've got two pieces of a right triangle. We can, again, Pythagorean theorem, right? So, or we could look at the 10 compared to the 6 and say, well, what 10 sixths, that's our scale factor to get to the from the short leg to the hypotenuse. So we could do that 1.6 forever scale factor times the 4.5. We're going a little bit faster on this one, guys, because we, we broke it all down on the last one. That gets 7.5, I think. And that's everything that we need to know here. So, Aaron, I love what you brought up that we can also just turn this into proportional thinking and say if I compare the 6 to the 8, that's 0.75, so I know that the comparison of something to 6 also has to have that same ratio. It's it's all proportions. Go ahead, Aaron. There are a lot less confusing fractions when I, the way I do it. See, to you, right, which is totally fine. I agree with that, but to me, I really like writing proportions. Maybe it's just that I like numbers. I like writing numbers and playing with numbers, but... Yeah, to me, I like doing proportions, but I get what you did. That was a really sweet application. Now, what about, though, Aaron, I will softball this back at you. Oh, by the way, the area is 75. For those of you that have sent it to me in the chat, the area here ends up being 75. I agree with you until we get to a situation like this. Which still, this isn't that nasty. The ratio here is actually just 1.3 if you do long leg compared to short leg. So guys, I'm going to wrap up the lesson here like really soon. But Aaron just, just pointed out a really good thing that I wanted to incorporate at some point. I just didn't want to layer stuff on too much. Another thing we can do is say, what is a common ratio in our situation? Because all of these triangles are going to be similar which means they're all going to share the common ratio. So another idea that I would write down in your notes, so at least you have it in your toolbox, is to ask, what is the common ratio? And make sure that you define it, right? So if we use Erin's method that she applied on the last one, we could do the long leg compared to the short leg. Now, sometimes it won't come out nice, and maybe we want to take a different different route. But if we do that comparison, it's one and a third. If we flip this around and do short to long, okay, so this is 1.3 forever, which is kind of gross. So what if we flip it around? If you're good with fractions, you'll already know that if this was four thirds, what is its reciprocal? This is, again, actually three-fourths. Is it always going to be 0.25 for rectangles? I just have, um, I don't know. That's an interesting, uh, interesting observation, though. That, so is this always true? True always? Question mark? I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I guess I should just go try and find more triangles. And you should probably do your homework. And see if they work out with 0 0.75. I was about to say, if you do your homework, you're going to see more of these. Wait, so hold on. Let's test something else then. If we're thinking about common ratios, I'm going to put method up here, just by the way, because this is another method. What was the high hypotenuse to the short leg was 10 to 6. 10 to 6 is not that nice, right? No, 10 to 6 is not. 6 to 10. So short to, well, let's solve this hypotenuse really quickly. What is 3.9 squared plus 5.2 squared? Guys, you should do this with me. What's that? Yeah. So in this case, I get 6.5 for the hypotenuse for the rectangle that we're looking at for LT, 
right? I'm looking at LT, I get 6.5. Hmm. So short the hypotenuse Well, that's interesting. Up here in the the previous problem if we do the short leg compared to the hypotenuse, it's 0 0.6, right? Short leg compared to hypotenuse of 4.5 and 7.5, it's 0 0.6. Aaron, you, you asked a really interesting question here. Are these common ratios always going to be true in every right triangle situation like this that we see? Now, now I'm really curious. So, what if we generalize this? Well, I mean for any rectangles. Right, but what we really... I, I'm agreeing with you. So first off, I want you to know I'm agreeing with you. We're really working with right triangles inscribed in the, the rectangle, right? So you're right, we're working with a rectangle, but we're working with right triangles. That's where we're getting these pieces. So I wonder that. Because not every rectangle is going to have certain ratios, right? Because rectangles can be constructed anyway. But the triangular pieces of the rectangle... Well, here's... If we take away the numbers... We could just say, okay, the whole diagonal length would be C. The edge length here, could, so Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If I break up my hypotenuse, since it's that diagonal, right, that goes across the rectangle. So, guys, this is where we're going to pick up class next week. But look at this. The right triangle in the rectangle. If we look at just the right triangle and take away the second half of the rectangle. All you have to do is reflect this, and you'll get the second half of your rectangle. But if we break this apart, could we prove the Pythagorean theorem? Can we, us simpletons, little, little mathematicians from Ohio, could we step up to the gauge of Pythagoras and prove his theorem? And that seems like a good place to stop. So what I will say is the last two assignments that you have due on Tuesday, I think, might be a little tough for you because we haven't gone deep into this sort of stuff yet of choosing the options for the proofs. So what I had planned for us to do next was go over to this assignment and actually discuss these problems like this that you're going to see in the homework, prove theorems using similarity. If you cannot get to a high score on this, that's fine. We're going to talk more about this next time, okay? But it's all, it's almost 10.50. I want to respect and give you guys a break in between um, and con time me out anyways. So we will pick this up next time and go deeper into these triangle proofs. Okay, if you have any other questions for me, please stick around. Um, otherwise, really good job today, guys. This is tough math, and uh, I can't wait to have you back in the building next week. So have a great day. My million pens. Actually, I have a question. Here, let me stop the recording really quickly.